Hi, my name is Inge and I'm a software engineer at eGym in the software engineering department. I will be talking with various software engineers at eGym to give you an idea about what it's like working at eGym and hopefully any of the questions that you have about what it's like will be answered. So let's start with an introduction round. Um, so let's start with you, Bea. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the software department in general? Yeah, thanks, Inge. Hi, I'm Bea. Um, I'm a software engineer and now head of software uh, for the platform realm at EGIM. And basically, I joined EGIM in 2014 as a, as a full stack engineer, when EGIM was still quite a small startup with only 40 employees in total. And uh, since then, uh, it has grown immensely and uh, had quite an incredible journey growing into a tech company with actually a dozen of product software teams located in Berlin, Munich, Kiev, and pa even Paris. Um, and all of these uh, teams are collaborating on uh, building software for the health and fitness market and uh, offer solutions uh, for real people making the gym work for everyone. Um, within the software department, uh, we share this vision and we are quite passionate about continuous improvement and building great solutions uh, for our users and offering products that also we can be proud of. Um, we try to look into data, make uh, swift decisions, learn and adapt, and we use our environments and deliver highly tested quality software. And we automate, we remove manual work and build scalable solutions, um, always having the EGIM ecosystem as a whole in mind. And tackling the new challenges is basically what gets me excited every day and uh, working together with the team on those. And I'm super happy to be here. Cool, thanks for the summary, Bea. Uh, then let's see what this means exactly for the different teams that we have at EGIM. So, um, Let's start with you, Victor. Can you tell me a bit about the team that you're working with and where you're located and a bit about sure. yourself? Sure. I'm Victor from Argentina. I've been working with the gym for two years now. I started as a backend engineer in the apps team. And currently, I'm working with the platform services team, PFS. Uh, PFS is about developing and maintaining this shared business logic that enables the eGym ecosystem some examples can be the authentication, the user profiles, or the gym location services. PFS is mainly based on Munich, but we have a small office here in Berlin too. Oh, cool, thanks. Uh, then let's move to you, Maura. Same hey. questions for you. Hey, my name is Maura and I am from Venezuela and I've been working in the trainer app team for three and a half years now. Uh, my team basically is in charge of developing a productivity tool for the trainers to help them manage uh, the members in the gym. For example, creating workouts or checking which uh, members are currently in the gym. And our team is located in Berlin. Thanks. Uh, how about you, Jacob? Yeah, so hi, I'm Jacob. I'm originally from the UK. I've been working at EGIM in the Munich office for the last three years now. Uh, it's been really great, mainly because of the challenges that we've faced in our products. Quadrain is the corporate gym network offering from EGIM. So we allow companies to sign up their employees to then access a huge network of gyms. And as a software team, we're in charge of maintaining the back ends and the front ends to allow our users to check into these gyms and pay us money, which is the most important part. Uh, we're split into a couple of teams. So we have our services team, which is in Munich completely. And we have a app team, which is in Kiev. All right. Panchal, can you go next? Sure, thanks, Inge. So hi, I'm Panchal, and I'm originally from India. And I've been working at eGym for almost three and a half years now. And currently I'm working in the machine software team, but earlier I joined at EGIM in the PFS team, and then I switched. I, um, so 
what my team is responsible for is basically connecting our strength machines to the back end or in other words putting the some of the smart into the smart devices on the gym floor and uh, we are responsible for maintaining and building new features for the user interface running on the devices and connecting it to the cloud and the rest of the services so we are in turn working with the rest of the teams very closely and we are based in munich Cool, thanks, Manchil. Then last but not least, Matthias, can you give an introduction? Sure. Hi, I'm Matthias. I've been with eGym for eight years and I work on the machine infrastructure team. And the machine infrastructure team, what we do is we take care of the lower level software and the firmer pieces of the fitness equipment. So the operating system that machine software SCUI runs on, for instance, on the other hand, also the control board firmware, um, then some backend systems that the operating system needs and interacts with. So lots of different technologies. You see, it's quite a, quite a large stack. So we have both electrical engineers and software engineers on our team. We are based in Munich and we work very closely with the hardware and machine software teams, which are also based in Munich. All right, thanks for the overview. Um, then let's dive into a bit more in-depth questions. So Victor, can you tell me which technologies and tools have you encountered at EGIM? Sure, um, there are many languages and tools that we use every day that I like them. One of them is Go. Uh, although I have experienced Go in a small scope projects, uh, we say in Engine we are using almost everywhere and this can it crowed on me. Uh, it's my go-to language now and for everything uh, related to the web. Another technology that I used before is JSON, but uh, in Egypt we've been using Swagger. Swagger allows you to document and generate the code automatically, which is especially important um, for small teams since in eGym, we have a small team handling a number of microservices, and this makes the API discovery easier. Uh, and maybe related technology is gRPC, which is like Swagger, but more hard-coded and also makes the, the life easier for the developer. Related to the infrastructure, I would add also Helm because it allows you to write the infrastructure as code which is something really interesting and uh, you use it all the way here in eGym. Thanks for sharing. Maura, uh, what would you consider your most challenging project that you have worked on? So basically the two projects are being like mainly involved. They both have uh, come with their own challenges, for example, learning Go from scratch. Uh, I would say that my most challenging project one called trainer task service that basically is in charge of managing trainer tasks and yeah basically it, it was challenging because we uh, i joined the project since the beginning since the planning was something i never done before so we need to model everything from scratch and also we started using uh, ddd domain driven design that it's a uh, basically a new shape you need to put in your head. And yeah, it basically I found it fascinating, but obviously it, come, it came with a lot of uh, learning. And one oh, another thing that was really challenging about it, it's that we use the protocol to communicate with other services, uh, basically consuming pop sub events and using gRPC for communication. And it was really new in the company at the moment. And we had to agree to like the best practices to do it. And we had to learn it also from the beginning. Well, that sounds like some good learning opportunities. Then uh, Jacob, for you, can you give an example of how you contributed and impacted in the company? Yeah, so at Qualtrain, we work quite closely with our ops team, developing internal tooling for them to manage our members and the check-ins and the gyms. And Building this tool is really good because obviously we're getting constant feedback from our ops team and they're telling us how many how many hours we're saving when we replace either third party tooling or adding 
automated cancellations for our members. So this like feedback is always really nice to see our impact on our colleagues working days. We also get to see impacts from the product side. So we implemented a plus one scheme, which allows partners of members to sign up and access the same gym network. And with our business metrics, we're able to see how many people are signing up, the value of these check-ins to the company. And we have targets, which sort of we build up towards. And it's nice as a product team to get to see us achieving these. We also have regular meetings from both each and wide and quality and wide. So it's this uh, bi-weekly uh, town hall events where we get told how our company's doing as a whole. And it's always really nice just to see how things are moving along and get sort of previews of new products or hints at things which we maybe need to improve on. Cool, thanks for sharing. So then for you, Panchal, uh, what is the biggest fuck up you have experienced? at EGIM and what lessons did you learn from it, most importantly? Mm, good question. Well, uh, I can tell you about one of our recent events. Um, we have a microservice that is storing the user training progression. So when the users are working out on devices, we have plans and we have to store how far along the plan they have come. And this service recently went under heavy refactoring. And we made a mistake in converting the user identifier to the format that is acceptable for this service. Well, this resulted in requests being rejected for a few hours. You say, why a few hours? Well, our logs were logging this as a warning and not as error. So none of the alerts were triggered. And we ended up losing some of the user progression data for a few hours. This is bad. And also we could not restore those because our backup strategies were there, but not configured properly. So, well, the learnings from this is that we should regularly test our backup strategies that along with the changes to the service, whether the backup is still valid or not, can we reload it from it. And while deciding what logs should be errors and warnings, we need to be careful what is an error and what is a warning. That is really, really important. Also, when we are refactoring our services, which are critical, we should really assume that there will always be bugs and we should have proper deployment strategies in place to test whether if the effects are intended or not. And yeah, I'm really glad that EGIM has the environment to accept mistakes and learn from them, not kick me out. <laughs> That's a good point. Thanks for sharing, Panchal. Sounds like you had some good learnings. Yeah. Then uh, Matthias, you mentioned you've been with EGIM quite a while already. Can you describe how your work has changed over the years and um, how you and EGIM have both grown? Yeah, sure. I mean, yes, it's been eight years. And when I started, we were just 30 people in the whole company. So of course, a lot has changed. Um, so I could, I could enumerate a lot of things. One thing that has stood out is that um, as we have grown and our customer base has grown um, and the ecosystem has grown is how important attention to detail is because if, if you're dealing with like I don't know two requests per second in your service then it probably doesn't matter whether you're using a primitive machine integer or a box or a box inside a box or a box inside a box inside a box it probably doesn't really make a difference um, but if you're dealing with thousands or tens of thousands, then it starts to make a difference. So details like this matter. Um, and especially for scalability and stability. But one aspect that I would like to highlight where attention to detail is also really important is documentation. That's one thing I've learned is how important good documentation is especially as the team and the software ecosystem becomes larger, it's important to, to take things slow, you know, not to rush into things too fast and churn out features without uh, really understanding what you're doing. Um, instead, document things really well, write good documentation, because if the documentation is good and it's understandable and people can come along and read it, then they can also come along and fix your code if there are bugs or improve it or um, make it more efficient. But if no one knows what your service is trying to do or 
if that function that you just wrote, um, what that's trying to do, then no one can no one can ever maintain it. And at some point, you have to throw it away and start from scratch, which is which is a really big shame. So write good documentation. Um, and by the way, it can actually be kind of fun when you have put some effort in and start polishing it. Thanks for sharing with us. Yes, it was a really good point. Then that was it. Uh, all my questions have been answered. Thank you all for joining uh, and answering the questions for our viewers. And um, if you have your interest has been piqued for joining eGym, perhaps, then yeah, please check out our open positions at eGym.com/careers.